Welcome back to Tech Talks. I'm Chris Bormas from Precorporation. Thank you for joining us today. And today we're going to do something a little different than our previous Tech Talks, where we highlighted certain attachment systems, locators, hater bars, O-rings, went through troubleshooting, relines, remakes. And the reason for that is we had the most interesting call come in the other day. And a whole bunch of our time each day is spent on treatment planning, this patient presented, what can we do? And I thought this was a great case because the conversation that went on between the restorative dentist, the technician, and our technical team here at Pre really was a lot of fun. And so we're going to kind of title today, what would you do? 90-year-old patient comes in to your practice, presents with the bar shown as above. The patient had a full denture but lost it. Retention was not sufficient with the old denture. No further implants will be placed, which is key. Why is that? Because the patient finances will not allow for any further money to be put into this case, meaning no implants and a new bar cannot be fabricated. Opposing as a natural dentition, the posterior ridge is atrophied and flat, and we have adequate interocclusal space, meaning we have 12 to 14 millimeters of interocclusal space. What would you do with this bar? So the question that came up was, can we salvage this existing bar, or should we convert the case to a stud attachment, like a locator? Well, I'm going to answer the second question first, and this will probably be part two of what would you do. My suggestion was to keep the bar, instead of converting to stud attachments, simply because in the maxilla, in general, bone is 50% less dense than in the lower arch, and we don't want to load or overload these implants in the 90-year-old lady with stud attachments. We want to protect those implants by splinting them together and having a bar. So, we're going to spend today talking about how do we salvage this bar. The first thing we took a look at were the distal and mesial extension ball attachments. These could have been SAGIX, they could have been VKS, they could have been OTs. Whatever they started off as, they sure don't look like them anymore. So in order to salvage these, we need to take these back to spears instead of the current shape they're in. And so we took a look at the SAGIX. Now the SAGIX has a unique female that flexes and grabs the neck of the spear, which is unlike a lot of other systems. But even with that unique retentive mechanism, we're still not going to have retention with the current design of the ball. So we took a look at the hollow ball reconstruction kit, which allows you both for sagittal balls and for vertical balls, it's great on mini implants for example, or balls on post copings, to restore and take the case back to either a 1.8, a 2.2, or a 2.5 millimeter titanium nitride coated ball. So, in order to utilize those mesial and distal attachments, we are going to utilize the hollow ball reconstruction kit. The next question was asked, can I put a locator on the bar in section B? Well, to place a locator onto an existing bar, we need 4 millimeters of buccal lingual space and 3 millimeters of vertical space for the threading of the locator. As you can tell from this picture, we did not have that space, and so we decided not to utilize a locator in the central area of the bar. The next question came up, can we place a hater clip on this long straight section? The question I came back with was, is there an undercut? Because all hater clips must have an undercut to provide retention. If there's not an undercut, there's nothing for the clip to flex out and snap into and provide retention. It was confirmed that yes, there was an undercut, and also yes, the retentive area of the bar was 1.8 millimeters in diameter, which is a standard hater bar diameter. Now, when we tried to decide and talked about which type of clips we wanted to use on the bar, plastic clips or the metal clips, first we thought about the function of the Sagix females. The Sagix females provide omniplanar movement, meaning they provide a hinging movement, they provide a vertical movement, and they provide a rotational movement. 
If we just put a plastic hater clip on the bar, which only provides rotation, we would be fighting against the sagittal movement of the balls. So, in order to stop that binding and to allow the free movement, once again to protect our weaker implants in the maxilla, we are going to use the all-metal Ackerman style clip. So, the final prognosis for this case, in order to A, salvage the existing bar, B, restore retention and function for the patient, and C, do it under the patient's limited finances, was to use the hollow ball reconstruction kit, combine that with the Sagix females, and use the metal Ackerman hater clips on the section to provide both vertical and rotational movement. So in part two of what would you do, we'll spend a little more time talking about different cases and in the maxilla, whether we should use a bar, whether we should use a stud. And in particular, there was a fun case we received a phone call on the other day where the patient was converting from a fixed all-on-four style prosthesis and wanted to go to removable. How could we utilize the existing implants and the existing abutments to convert from fixed to removable? We'll see you next time on Tech Talks. Thank you for joining us today for Tech Talks by Pre. What would you do? Case planning on an existing overdenture bar, part one. Interested in learning more about the products you've seen here today? Visit us on the web at www.preet.com. Have a question you'd like to submit? Email us at techtalks at preet.com. That's T-E-C-H-T-A-L-K-S at preet.com.